Hello everyone! In today's video, I am going to be talking about the five most common reasons why people fail on Redbubble. Thought I'd introduce myself just in case you're new here. Hi, my name is Katie and on my channel I talk about my own print-on-demand journey so that I can share all the tips and tricks that I am learning with you to make your print-on-demand journey just a little bit easier. Alright, without any further ado, let's dive around into the video. Alrighty, so there are lots of different reasons why sellers might struggle to make sales on Redbubble. Uh, but I have come up with a list of five different reasons that are some of the most common reasons why someone might not be making sales on Redbubble. And this is going to be based off of my own experiences as well as some of the mistakes that I have seen uh, people making, especially when I do my uh, subscriber Redbubble shop reviews. These are going to be some of the most common mistakes that I see others making that prevents them from making sales. And don't worry, one of the reasons is not the fact that they do not properly capitalize or format their titles. Although, that could be one, but that's not one of the list. <laughs> Alright, so the first reason that many people struggle to make sales on Redbubble is that they do not use collections. Uh, now hopefully most of you are familiar with what collections are on Redbubble. Uh, you are able to group similar designs into what is called a collection and then those collections are featured at the top of your Redbubble shop page. Now it is advantageous to create collections because if a customer stumbles across one of your designs and does want to see more designs similar to that design, such as a bunch of designs created around a specific niche or interest, then it is super great if they can just go to your collections, find the collection they are looking for, and then scroll through that collection in order to find lots of designs that are perfect for them. And this will help increase your odds of making a sale of one of those items. And the second reason that many people do not make sales on Redbubble is that the designs that they create and upload are not cross-niched designs. Now, cross-niched designs are basically when you take two different subjects and combine them together in a single design. For example, uh, the retro sunset uh, design or graphic has been trending a lot this past year. So if you wanted to create a cross niche design, you could take the retro sunset and cross it with some other area of interest such as Bigfoot, dinosaurs, or even some kind of job or profession. These sorts of designs uh, are really great at helping you make sales because it narrows down your competition a lot. So for example, if you just created and uploaded a design and the main subject of the design and all the tags that you are using are, for example, let's say, doctor, a doctor related design, that job, and you upload that, if you look it up on Repubble, you will see that that keyword has a ton of competition. So the odds of a customer finding your design when they search for that keyword are really, really tiny. So that is why when you cross niche your designs, you drastically decrease the amount of competition you have and that way you increase your odds of making sales. And the third most common reason that people struggle so much on Redbubble is that the sales that they do in fact make do not amount to much in profit. So what I mean by this is that it is very important to optimize your Redbubble artist margins. That way you get the most out of every single sale that you make. 
And my favorite example, of course, is specifically stickers. If you just keep the, the default Redbubble markup of 20%, then if you do sell a sticker, then you might only be making maybe up to 30 cents per sticker, which is not a lot, especially if you are just starting out or you're not making all that many sales. 30 cents is not a whole lot. However, lots of research has been done into how high exactly that you can put your markups before you start seeing a decrease in sales and from what I have been learning it seems that people can go as high as 150 to 200 percent markup on stickers because it's just so cheap to produce them plus Redbubble always runs these bundled discounts where if you buy a certain number of stickers like four or ten then you get a percentage discount on that purchase, which helps increase the number of stickers that Redbubble does sell. So for myself personally, I have my stickers marked up to 140% margins, and that means instead of making only 30 cents for one sticker sale, I make closer to a dollar 60 cents. And yes, people do still buy stickers even if they are two to three dollars. And what's even better, if you sell a larger sticker, then you can make up to 20 bucks on a sticker. Now that's pretty amazing. The fourth reason why people do not succeed on Redbubble is that they do not update their listings to enable new products. As I'm sure a lot of you have seen, in this past year, Redbubble has actually added a lot of new products that they are selling, including um, different sizes of masks, fitted masks, they've added uh, backpacks, duffel bags, aprons, puzzles, lots of these great new products that you can put your designs on. However, if in the past you just dumped a bunch of designs up on Redbubble and then did not have and you have not gone back into your account to make tweaks, improve them, change anything, then maybe you don't even know that a lot of your products are not automatically enabled on the new products that Redbubble is adding. And fortunately, Redbubble saw that people who had tons of designs, it would take way too long for them to go back into every single listing, scroll down and edit each design, hit upload, go back to the Manage Portfolio page and do it all over again for hundreds and hundreds of designs. So what they did is they created a bulk editing tool where you can select as many designs as you want and select a specific product that you want to enable that design on. And then it brings up a wonderful page where you can just quickly go through all of your different designs and make the manual adjustments to make sure that that design looks great on the new product that you are now enabling. And that leads into the fifth reason why people struggle so much on Redbubble to make sales, and that is that a lot of times people do not optimize their designs for the product that they are on. So the best example of this is when I review people's Redbubble shops and I see, for example, maybe I'm looking at a laptop cover and they have their design on that laptop cover, but the problem is there is a massive white border all the way around their design. And this is such a major problem because when the design does not fill up or take up the entire space of the product, then the odds of someone actually buying that product go down to practically zero. I mean, if you were looking for a cool design, and maybe you found it, but it's only just like this tiny little square on a product surrounded by just a blank white border, you're not going to buy that, are you? It doesn't look good, it's not exciting, it's hard to see it. And overall, it's just not something that anyone would be looking to buy. And I see this problem on lots of products. 
uh, especially like shower curtains, scarves, all the laptop and zipper pouches, all those things. I see all those things and they just have these giant white borders around them and an itty bitty little design right in the middle. And sure, it does take more time when you're uploading to double check and make sure that your design properly fills the entire space of every single product on there. But I mean, if you think about it, you're putting the work up front in order to get paid later perpetually. So it's really very much worth it to take the extra time to make sure that your design looks absolutely awesome on all of your different products. And if the reason that you cannot get your design to fill up the entire space of the product is because your file size is too small, then what you need to do is create larger designs. If you really don't want to recreate a design that you've already made that is in fact too small to optimize for all of the products Redbubble offers, then you might be able to create the file size that you need as a new canvas and then insert your design as a PNG or some other type of photo file and then just enlarge it. The risk with this is that your design might become blurry depending on the design program that you used to create it. Uh, if it's in Photoshop or some kind of uh, artist application like Procreate, uh, then it might your design might become blurry because those are pixel based. If you used Illustrator to create your design, then that is a vector based design program. So even if you make your uh, design larger, it will not become blurry. So if you do in fact need to do that, then uh, what I personally use is Procreate canvases because you can create whatever size that you need then you can upload that photo or just start from scratch and create your designs in there. You can also use Photoshop uh, and Illustrator really for these same purposes. Just create a larger file size. Stick to a specific standardized uh, Redbubble canvas size. I personally usually design at one of the largest possible sizes that will fit on the shower curtains and bedspreads because those are some of the largest designs or largest products that Redbubble offers. Uh, and I will put that file size dimension here. I also talk about uh, I also talk about why I chose to use this specific uh, file size in more detail in this video, which will pop up around here somewhere. So if you are in fact uh, making any of these five errors, then I would highly suggest you fix them, even if it does take a lot of time. We are in this for the long term. This is definitely not a get rich quick scheme. Those are usually illegal or don't work at all. We want to create an awesome digital asset that will keep creating passive income for us for the entire foreseeable future. And that is certainly worth a bit of time. Well, I hope you found these five reasons and tips helpful. I hope they help improve your Redbubble shop and help you make lots and lots of sales. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. All right, I will see you in the next one.